Hello Ivanov, Andy Macario, good evening. Hello. You are both um, the artists who collaborated to Meet Slap. A video where you, Andy, are sitting through 56 seconds of your right breast being repeatedly slapped by raw ribeye. So we've known you for several daring occurrences with the group Black Metal Chicken. Um, we saw you first time last year in Choke Me Baby. Then again we saw you later for this time something a little closer to Meet Slap. Um, a piece called Carnal Instincts, on which we see you slapping your inner thighs with seven ounces of raw meat. Now this event happened in collaboration with um, Victor Ivanov here present. We know you for the, the impressive amount of mechanical structure uh, you produce, like the most recent The Adam of My Creation, where you'd wire pieces of dead chicken to tiny motioning robots. We've also seen you uh, from the pig's head, you shaped into a pair of Adidas trainers which were auctioned for a LGBT charity. And lastly, for something a bit different from uh, what you usually do, TV head, where you perform as a drag with an iPad fixed on your face that shows a video on which a fake Hitler is talking. So, exhibitionism, feminism, art and myth. Um, what actually brought you to that, to experiment um, in that particular field? Feminism, exhibitionism and meat. Well, in terms of exhibitionism, I'm an exhibitionist, um, as you can see. So, yeah, that, there's no doubt that that's part of the work. Uh, but also, actually, is it really exhibitionism? I mean, I guess in a way, but also, you know, you probably say that because um, I'm in the work. And I guess that is a form of exhibitionism mm. as an artist if you are present within the work in such a, a direct way. Um, but that can be misconstrued as being self-centred, but then it's not necessarily so. Yeah, I, I am and I'm not. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, I am the object and the subject of the work. Yeah. Um, and that's something that's very important within my practice. Um, obviously, the feminism comes in into it as well, uh, mainly because um, what influences me a lot is feminist texts, um, and not just not just uh, feminism as politics, but also as um, a form of expression, and I guess as like um, a way of making art as well. Like you know, and, and and I've been influenced a lot by by feminist artists or female artists, kind of working with uh, within a sort of feminist context, not necessarily feminist work, but the feminist sort of reading or feminist mm. context. Um, but the main thing about my practice is the relationship between the audience and the the object or, or um, the model, you know, and... Oh, it's very, very voyeuristic. Yeah, sure. very, very voyeuristic. And for me, what I'm really interested in is the relationship between both audience, both the audience and the object, but for me, what I've been working with a lot is what happens when the audience become the object. So when when the when the gaze is inverted. So for example, say I'm sitting here and there's an audience watching me, or you're you're watching me. What happens when I'm watching you back? And that for me is what's really interesting, and that's kind of what I've been working a lot with. Um, another aspect would be me using other people as like a substitute for me, uh, which is why sometimes in the work you see other people rather than me. But you, through the use of wigs or some sort of objectification, they then sort of become me in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so there's like various aspects to the work. Um, and obviously the work I've been doing with Black Metal Chicken has been quite different to the work that I usually make. Um, I, I, think, I think the fantasy was, the, the fantastical element is yeah. very different. Because yeah. to, if I just had to give you like an answer of observation, basically, uh, your normal work is very colourful, even though your WordPress is Andy Pandy land, you know, it's like, 
you're creating this whole new kind of place, you know. Yeah. And it's pink and it's and it's sexual and it's very fluffy, you know. Or you know, it's quite. But it's also very in your face, and it's. Oh, it's, no, it's, um, it's, al it's also very quite aggressive. I mean, it is I mean, quite like, aggressive. I mean, it's actually very aggressive. And even if you don't talk about kind of like some of the formal aspects, just just the the overplayed aspect of it is a form of aggression, you know. Yeah. Um, but with black metal chicken. You know, there was uh, uh, the, the the fantasy, this kind of pink fantasy, was completely shattered. You yeah. know, and you what you had was something, uh, well, also aggressive. But I mean, this time it was literally aggressive. You know, like the whole just the, the, the action of it was aggressive. You know, and uh, it's more realistic as well, and it's quite raw. And I think that's the difference between that and the kind of fantasy worlds I create in my other works mm. and it's very much it very much goes back to this kind of idea that with the internet you're able to be whoever you want to be and this which is why I create different avatars mm. for, for myself you know like there's me like with the pink hair and there's me with like the purple hair and that'll be I'll have a different name for that and then I have you know I have like five or six different names and depending on which scene I'm I'm sort of socializing in whether it's the drag scene or the fetish scene or whatever I have different names and different characters and people only kind of know me within as in as this sort of creature as this sort of other person and that's what my work very much plays on is the other selves and having a conversation with these other selves that's very much what the work is centered around and through that that's where everything else comes from like the exhibitionism the voyeurism you know but it's very much directed towards me which is why even when I am objectifying a model, someone else who's standing in for me, I'm still objectifying myself but doing it through objectifying them. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's it's yeah, it's always about me objectifying myself and questioning um, where I stand, you know, and how I see myself as well as how others see me. Uh, and also obviously as you said, uh, making the audience aware of themselves and their yeah, position. Yeah. Because I think as as a member of the audience um, kind of certain things switch off. It's, it's, yeah. it's almost like it's a, it's a position of comfort because you're like because you're there, but you know you're very safe. You're yeah. not. Yeah. You're not. Uh, you know, if, if it's like someone putting someone on stage and they become suddenly so nervous, it's so and they lose because people don't like having their attention in front of them. Yeah. People are not comfortable with that. They don't like being pointed out as well at what yeah. they're doing, and and that's very much what I try to do without having any sound or any kind of, you know, or me being there saying look. This is look what you're doing. I do it through the videos, and 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 this is also one of the reasons why there's no sound in my other works at all. You know, because I think it's very interesting to kind of to see how people react to just the visual and the visual element. I mean, you can see the models. You know, like for for example, in Got Milk, she looks back at the audience, like knowing that they are objectifying her, and that places them in a very uncomfortable position. But at the same time, they can't stop watching, you know. Yeah. And actually, that's been one of my most popular works, especially amongst men. Um, and I've received countless messages of them saying, you know, oh, it really turns me on, you know. But I feel like I shouldn't be watching it, you know. So that's that's quite mm. interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. To me, is the embodiment of our relationship uh, with media and technology. Um, it, it, by that, what I mean is, um, like for example, with TV head is literally because uh, uh, TV head is not a reference to a television on the head. It's a, a head full of TV, head full of media, and, wh and what I was trying to do with that is basically uh, create this this living being, this monster, okay, in a very kind of Frankensteinian uh, uh, mode, um, who was uh, an amalgamation of different torn away uh, media um, as well as having uh, a body and, a, and technology and all these kind of different things and, and, and trying to find visually uh, and also in the way that you respond to this work just the right chord for it to uh, throw you off in exactly the same way or, or for you to respond to it in exactly the same way that you respond or you behave yourself uh, whilst you're exposed to media, basically. Um, and that's what, for example, with TV Head, or one variation of TV Head, when you have the, the Hitler and the drag, and, 
and all these different signifiers, for example, and me obviously being uh, a gay Jewish guy wearing Hitler, wearing this whole thing you know, in drag, and it kind of becomes a bit ironic. And uh, yeah, so basically just throwing all these things into one and just seeing what happens basically. But it, it, with other works, uh, it, it, with a very don't use media, it, it's more material based. And I'm, what I try to do is I try to catch a moment, for example, with the kinetic stuff, where it suspends the viewer and kind of puts you into this place where you're, you're no longer able to uh, understand or you are able to understand but you're not able to uh, basically relate to it in the way that you relate to other, like when you see other things, when you have preconditioned ideas of how you're supposed to respond to things. And I even though it might be something that you're very used to seeing uh, the, in individually the different parts, together and with the action uh, it does something that's very uh, unusual um, and again I said that the, in, individually the parts don't really mean anything they're very very simple things and there'll be absolutely no response no no specific no a special response from you from anyone really um, uh, to them but when they put together and it really takes quite a lot of work to find that very moment it's kind of this for me it's just that moment where I find the work to be com not complete, but where I'm, I'm, I'm willing to walk away from it for that time being, anyway, because I find that that suspension is enough for me. That suspension is where the somebody is able to um, really question, because through uh, through confusion, question what they're seeing and question their response to it. For example, with chicken skin teddy bear, I've had such a so many responses which said that. For example, I, I, I love it and I hate it at the same time. I'm disgusted and comforted, comforted by it at the same time. And that's very important to me because uh, where they have this piece of work that basically uh, does two things. Um, and basically when, when someone looks at it, they have to try they need to understand the relationship between those two things. Uh, for me, that's, uh, this is, that's a successful place to be with any piece of work. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite happy uh, to at that point to leave it. It was very chaotic as well. Mm. Kind of making sort of making some sort of understanding of the world that it that it exists within. Um, and I think it's a very much sort of a response to to this kind of like media saturated culture that we live in, you know? And yeah. it is very chaotic. Um, we don't know where we're going, where we're where we're coming, like it's just it's, it's chaos, and and somehow in some ways it's kind of like beautiful that these these things are able to exist with this in this kind of uh, crude mm. world, you know. Um. Now, since uh, Calvin Instincts is to some extent uh, the performance work that led to its slap, let's talk about the different aspects of it. Um, first, in your biopic, you said that you wanted to place the audience in a very uh, uncomfortable position or turning them into voyeurs. Can you develop on that please? <laughs> um, for me, the most important thing even with Meat Slab, and it, this goes back to a lot of the work that I make, is the way we view people as objects or the way we, we kind of interact with them. Um, so for me, placing myself in this compromising, I'm going to say compromising position, like in one aspect it kind of makes me vulnerable but there's the other aspect which makes the audience vulnerable and it's this kind of, um, it's them as the voyeur where they feel uncomfortable but at the same time they can't stop watching and this is something that we've discussed a lot in terms of meat slap um, as well as choke me baby when we did it live and also God Save the Queen, which was the initial video, um, the, well, was the initial choking video, which we then turned into a live performance. Um, I like the way that uh, it engaged with the audience and the way the audience, audience was um, captivated by it. But at the same time, I mean, this is not to discount that piece of work. Uh, for me, uh, kind of something else happened, like with, I don't know, maybe it was the meat or just the way you sexualized it. Uh, but mostly really what I really loved is the the slapping and I wanted to see I wanted to take from as as I interpret the successful elements from that piece so the thing kind of like strip strip it down to a point where uh, only the most essential information is there um, again uh, I was approaching it very intuitively so 
I almost didn't even consider the sexual aspect in that sense. For me, I just saw the slapping of the meat. Uh, something is there. So I built an initial meat slap machine and when I used my face, and even though it worked, uh, something was missing. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't the sort of thing that was, gonna, uh, that was gonna really engage anyone in any, in, in any significant way. And I was thinking about it and I was thinking about it, and actually I spoke to Andy again, and uh, we just we joked around. Uh, I wish you'd have it slapping your ass. And initially, I was like, "Oh my God, that'll be hilarious!" But obviously, not <laughs> taking it seriously. And then I went home, and then it just it almost kind of like when he's right there staring you in the face, <laughs> and it just came to me. It was the middle of the night. I was on my way home from the studio, and I just called her straight away. I was like, "Andy, this is it. This 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 is how it's gonna work, and it's gonna work basically. Like I, I see in my mind's eye, and basically, it's gonna." It's gonna have everything that we need to have in it, basically. And it saves saves all the important aspects. And but the next day, we just came in and, and shot did it. it. Yeah. And the and the meat slap that's up online on Vimeo, that is Experiment. that's it. That was just came in, bam, done it. Move on to the next project. Let's work on the next piece of work. We'll just put this aside. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was very it was just, much just, just an experiment. It's so raw. Like, yeah, just meat an experiment. Slap, as it is on Vimeo, is in the most rawest of forms because at that point put it aside, we were working on Black Metal Chicken 3, put it aside and we're like, okay, we'll, we'll deal with it after Black Metal Chicken 3, and it just went crazy, like, it went crazy, it was, mm. it, it was incredible. Back to your um, collaboration with, with Meat Slap, um, what turned the video into a viral video was um, its appearance on, on Reddit. There were loads of uh, comments from um, from that on which uh, some were saying "fuck, it's not art," um, and others saying, "Well, somewhere it is." Uh, to you guys, what is artistic, and, and where do you draw the line? Well, I would say for me personally, um, what happens in Meat Slap, uh, the viral response is uh, almost like a separate piece of itself, and uh, it almost has nothing to do with the original artwork. Um, I see it as a obviously as a, as a just a, as a com continuation of what the, the work, but I, I see it more as a, a, as kind of in related to our previous works where we directly speak about um, I I social behaviors and, on the internet and kind of cyber activities and stuff like that. It just so happens that something about this work, and bearing in mind that this work was made in, in, in literally in the middle of all the other works happening so it, it's very much kind of influenced by those works uh, something happened to this work which has uh, uh, allowed it to basically communicate like this to, to a mass audience and then that being not in the sense that it was it, it was put on the internet so it was exposed to a mass audience but that, that's not the thing that made it what it is um, it engaged people in a way which was completely unpredictable and we had no way of, of basically foreseeing that. Um, or controlling it once it happens. Exactly. Well. I mean, we had a way of controlling it in the sense that we could always take it off, but. True, but then it's already been posted and reposted on other sites. It's yeah. basically out of our hands now. You know? Absolutely. I mean, the minute you post something on the internet, you have yeah. to accept the fact that it's no longer yours. Uh, yeah. This is the nature of the internet, and we kind of have to make, yeah. uh, make our peace with it. Uh, but at the same time, I uh, even when there were times where uh, the thought have crossed my mind to take it off when it went uh, on the TV program in America, Tosh.0, Comedy Central took it, stole it from us in fact, um, never asked for permission or acknowledgement. Um, at that point uh, there was definitely a thinking I was, uh, that maybe we should take it off because for whatever reasons, obviously because it was uh, negative, it was abuse in some respects, but at the same time I think what happened is, uh, is great. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing that happened and uh, it's something that we can never replicate again uh, with, with our work because it was natural. Uh, what happened is it became a platform for uh, social kind of like cyber behaviors, the very things that we were talking about with the other works. Suddenly this, is the, this became a platform for it, you know, like very naturally. And uh, it's kind of like being in a laboratory and you suddenly via, via some wonderful era, discover a whole new life form or something, or something happens which is completely unpredictable and it changes everything, you know? Um, so in that sense, it was a very uh, uh, wonderful experience and all the comments and all the input and all the uninhibited kind of response that it created, be good and bad. I mean, today we're still receiving comments on Vimeo and 
that some of them are just some of the most wonderful things I've heard about people speaking about another person's body, you know, about Andy's body. And it's a very, um, in that sense, not that it's to do with the, with the work, but it's just a very, very kind of uplifting thing to see, you know. I've actually received a lot of personal messages as well. People email me or message me on Vimeo, on YouTube, or whatever. Really? So, yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been phenomenal. <laughs> But most of it, it whether being good or bad, it was a sort of sexual nature. Yeah. So even the good ones are like, oh, you know, I've got the widow's boner or nice tits and da da uh, And the negative ones obviously being just horrible things and stuff yeah. like that. Whereas the ones that me are very much kind of like, I went on his website, I saw his work, it's rubbish, it's shit, you know, it's weird, it's crazy, or all, all that kind of stuff, you know. Very, even though, even though I, 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 I'm not as visible in my work, there are a few bits where I am visible. And even though there's even like a, a, a few sexual things where, where the TV head, the initial TV head test when I'm in my body, when I'm touching myself and playing myself in that sense, it, that was completely untouched. But then that's, that's interesting, isn't it? The, the fact that because I'm a, I'm a woman, even though I'm an artist, I'm stripped of any artistic merit whatsoever. Mm. Whereas you, even in the work that you've made that's a bit more sexual, no one actually comments on that. Mm. Whereas if I do anything sexual, that naturally just going to comment on it and every th pretty much every single comment that i've read so far has been directed to me in a sexual way yeah. whether it's oh nice tits or whatever you know there have been people that have said more of andy's tits please you know and stuff like yeah. that you know but then i have had people uh message me on vimeo where they've seen my other work through this and they you know they're really interested in it for example my got milk video seems to be the most popular which you know, it's not actually it's not actually me in the video. It's my sister, but you know, men seem to really get off on that one. They really seem to really love it. But Excellent. it's been really interesting, and you know, I, I don't know. Like for me, like it goes back again to the fact that I'm a woman. You know, mm. they w can never strip that that kind of you can't desexualize. Se yeah, you a woman. can't desexualize me in any way, and that's why it's like oh, you know, when they've said negative things about me and my body, it's been because I don't adhere to this stereotypical uh, idea of beauty or, or mm. of what is feminine or of what is female, you know? So, and that's pre pretty much like... I think the very interesting comment, uh, probably our favorite comment, <laughs> uh, we was actually together when we read it, it was just my only one night, is this guy who was basically in complete, complete awe of Andy's tits and, um, and he initially proposed it in a very sexual way and I was like, this is not a porno. I just commented, was like, you know, come on guys, this is, this is, this is art. <laughs> And he's like, if I wanted to get a porno, I'd go on a, on a porn site brackets, which I do. Uh, but Andy's, Andy's breasts are more than that. Andy's breasts are real to me. I, kind of, I, I can't remember the, ex remember the exact wording, but... And then he, he said, Andy's breasts are reality. Exactly. And he said, Andy's <laughs> like, breasts are reality, which was such a, it's just an amazing... And that's his exact words. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And kind of like, he coined it. And yeah. I think you were like, I'm going to put that on a frame above my head. I think I'll actually put that on some business cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So before we wrap up, um, uh, you you will be uh, performing at um, next event called uh, Mon Mon Panic. Panic. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Well, well I will be performing yeah. live. Meet slap. All right. <laughs> I mean, All right. Okay. Meet yeah. slap live. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will be performing uh, uh, TV head and my uh, my uh, Kansas sculptures are going to be there as well. But the main thing really is the uh, the. Meat Slap Live, uh, which is going to be really interesting because I think the kind of the, the whole Meat Slap idea has been so muddled up with this whole internet thing. Yeah. It's kind of like we, I think I speak for both of us when I say that we can't really wait to see the back of this aspect of Meat Slap. Kind I of can't like, wait to just move on yeah. to the next thing. I'm kind of bored <laughs> of Meat Slap now. It's just it's just ongoing and it's never ending it's, and it's like, it's doing kind of you know and becoming less and less kind of uh, uh, active. This whole uh, cyber thing. Um, and I think as a as a live piece, yeah. it's very powerful and it's very different. And kind of the expectations were when we have spoken to other people about it, it's just kind of like it's not going to work live because it's the whole kind of modernist Dadaist thing. You know, it's been done, la la la, nothing new there. Whereas on the internet, there's something new. It has a social aspect. But I think that's all very wrong. I think actually um, it's going to be very, very new. And uh, I don't mean like something like fresh, but it has, it's, there's, a, there's a new aspect to it. It's, it's different from what was done before um, because it originates from somewhere else. You know what I mean? And, and that will, you know, like, if anyone's going to make that connection, that, that's going to be a very long, long trip, basically, I think.